Okay, so this is a really weird and peculiar video topic that's really not going to be something you see often, especially in this part of the hockey conversation world. Today we're talking about the 2023 NHL Entry Draft and the Montreal Canadiens. Because a few days ago we had ourselves some, I don't want to say controversy, let's just more say rumors. A bunch of rumors as to who the Canadiens internally value more in this 2023 draft. Now, the reason we are talking about this mostly is because of a recent episode of The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinaro. Now, I think a lot of Canadians fans know who Marinaro is. He does a lot of Canadians-related stuff and makes podcasts, etc., etc. And his recent episode of The Sick Podcast went out there and cited a really interesting conversation from Aaron Portsline of the Athletics Columbus Division. Now, these two entities are completely different. Portsline does Columbus stuff, Marinero mostly focuses on Canadian stuff, so kind of seeing the two get mentioned in the same breath is kind of weird. But the reason we are talking about this video here today is because of what was said on the podcast. Here's the clip. Sean Hashim went out there and did his due diligence in finding what it is that Marinero says, but Marinero, on his episode of The Sick Podcast, reports that Aaron Portsline, Columbus reporter, says that the Montreal Canadiens are essentially really, really high on Matvey Mishkov. Now, how high are they on this guy, according to what the rumor mill ends up spelling? Well, according to Marinero, he reports that Aaron Portsline said that the Montreal Canadiens director of amateur scouting Nick Bobrov apparently likes Matvey Mishkov so much that he calls Mishkov a Russian bedard. Now, that's a really strong phrase to be throwing out there for a guy who's eligible in this year's crop of guys. We know Matvey Mishkov has had a lot of tumultuous things to deal with this season, but at the end of the day, He's a very talented hockey player, and when it comes to what he projects to be in the future, if he hits his absolute ceiling, he could be a bona fide 50 to maybe even 60 goal player per NHL season when he hits his prime. But of course, there are contract things that are going on with this guy. There are circumstances with him being in Russia that may prohibit him from going as high as he could in a draft based off of pure potential and output. But at the end of the day, this is some pretty big news. Apparently hearing that the Canadians are super high on Mishkov to the point that they're even calling him the Russian Bedard. Now, you may be thinking, okay, well, it's cool the Canadians have their assessment of this guy, and if they really like him a lot, then who's to say they're not going to draft him, right? But the reason this podcast with Tony Marinero was even worth noting was because it's a Montreal guy reporting on what was apparently said by a Columbus guy regarding Montreal and their perspectives in the draft. Aaron Portsline himself went out there and said that he didn't know where this is coming from. He never said that. In fact, here's the response from Aaron Portsline himself. I'm a big fan of Tony Marinero and I've done his show many times, but I've never said or written any of this regarding Nick Bobrov and Matt Vemishkov. And of course, when the guy bites back and he says, wait a minute, I didn't say that, what are you talking about? We have to get some more journalism going on here. Sean, the guy that actually tweeted out the video clip of the Marinero podcast itself, says, I'm scouring the Portsline podcast where he says CBJ would take Will Smith and I have nothing here about Bobrov. I'm still hunting for the Bobrov intel closer to the source. Then there are links to the podcasts and everything. It's all there. We had ourselves a final rounding out tweet, though, by Sean. Regarding this Mishkov Montreal thing, here's the entire recap. Firstly, there is an Aaron Portsline podcast that says that Columbus might take Smith over Mishkov. This was the detail we didn't really talk about, but we can talk about that in another video later on next week. Number two, we had ourselves an article from Hockey 30, misinterpreting this information, saying that Bobrov, the Canadian's director of amateur scouting, apparently really likes Mishkov. Marinero then reads that and reports it on his podcast. Number four, Twitter comments that Portsline thinks Bobrov likes Mishkov, having heard it on Marinero's podcast. Number six, Sean finds the clip, name is number five. Yeah, apparently five doesn't exist in this universe, but then finds Portsline's clip, posts both showing that it doesn't match up. You then have yourselves Aaron Portsline, who says that he didn't end up saying that, and then Tony Marinero reveals that he read it on Hockey 30, which isn't really all too reliable of a source in this capacity. So, at the end of the day, 
even though the Montreal Canadiens fan base was all treated to a pretty good piece of news when they learned, apparently, that their director of amateur scouting loves Matvey Mishkov, it apparently wasn't the case. And whether or not there is some sort of affinity that the Canadiens' developmental staff feel towards the guy, we don't know. We'll have to wait and see until the draft actually comes and goes to see if the Canadians do indeed like Mishkov that much. But I will say that Nick Bobrov also was a scout for SKA St. Petersburg. So there is another connection, more than one connection, linking Bobrov to the situation. Now, when it comes to Mishkov, I definitely do think that this is one of the guys that if the Canadians have the option to draft, you draft him. Like, the Canadians are not going to go out there and make the Stanley Cup Finals again anytime soon, so who cares if the guy's going to take a few years to come over? At the end of the day, if everything works out, you want to talk about how good Cole Caulfield is going to be when he is in his prime? Well, think about that for a second, and then double it. It's like that TikTok meme, double it and give it to the next person. That's exactly what the Canadians would be receiving should they draft another guy like Matt Mishkov and just allow him the proper reins to develop in the most appropriate way possible. Now, of course, the Canadians don't really have too much of a say should they draft Mishkov and see what he's able to do right away. They're not really going to have any control over his development because he's just going to be in Russia the whole time. But once he does come over, when he's 20, 21 years old, whatever the number is going to be, if he's going to be as good as we think he's going to be, then this could be an immediate 30-goal guy right away in the NHL. You see some players in the KHL who have really good success immediately after transitioning. It's not always the case, but sometimes it is. Andre Kuzmenko is the one that comes to my mind right away. That guy was a 40-goal scorer, a near-40-goal scorer with Vancouver this prior year. Now, Matvey Mishkov is, of course, a lot younger, but I definitely would debate that he's a lot more of a goal scorer than any of these Russian players have been ever since Alex freaking Ovechkin from a decade-plus ago. And if he really does pan out to what he could become, having this guy as a sniper option alongside a Cole Caulfield will make things very interesting for the Canadians going forward. In fact, you might even be willing to trade one of these guys. Who really knows? Of course, it probably doesn't sound like the best idea, considering having more goal scores usually leads to a lot more wins, but... Having Mishkov and Caulfield on the same team seems like it could be either the best problem to have or open up a completely other separate can of problems that we may not have foreseen. Part of me wonders, you know, you talk about Brent Burns and Eric Carlson sharing the spotlight of number one offensive right-handed defenseman on San Jose and how both of these guys sort of played better when they were separated. Me thinks there may be a world where that sort of problem exists for the Habs should they get Mishkov and Caulfield on the same power play or even in the same position in the top six, whatever. Like, they're both pretty similar players with similar roles on their teams should they be placed onto the same spot in the lineup. And I don't really know how that's going to work out if you have both of these guys as right-handed lethal snipers on the left wing. But either way, you can talk to the console your thoughts about the idea of Matvey Mishkov heading over to the Montreal Canadiens if they like him as much as the Marinero podcast reports that Portsline says that they do. Yeah, it's a mouthful, isn't it? It's kind of a he says, she says sort of game of telephone that kind of got misconstrued by a few articles going out there and saying a few things. I'm not going to go out there and confirm or deny anything, say that the Canadians definitively, oh, they really, really like Mishkov, they're going to take this guy second overall or whatever. But I will say instead, if Mishkov is the guy the Canadians end up taking, then I definitely would not think that's a bad idea. Thoughts of the comments section below, either way, all your opinions about Marinero, the podcast, Aaron Portsline, and his word, apparently getting tossed around in there. Do you want the Canadians to take Matvey Mishkov? And if not, who would you rather have them take instead? I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.